studying the movement, genetics, and distribution of red band trout and dry freight. So we've done genetic work on these fish and found that they're genetically pure and not interbred with hatchery rainbow trout or introduced cutthroat trout. So that makes them a special population, especially in the face of extensive integration that red band trout have done with hatchery rainbow trout. Um, we're studying the movement of these fish to see whether or not the culvert at Bulgus Basin Road and man-made waterfall right below it are interrupting their movement and separating two populations. Genetic work has shown that the fish are at least partially isolated, so they have di different genetics above and different genetics below the culvert, and also that their genetic diversity is fairly low, so they could benefit if we reconnected those populations. We're also going to do some distribution work, so we'll get a map of where red band trout are distributed inside of Dry Creek, and some habitat work as well. We put temperature loggers in the stream, in Upper Dry Creek at least every half mile, and then wider distances between temperature loggers downstream. We're going to do some radio telemetry work as well. We're going to do four batches of five fish each during each season, and so we'll get an idea of what the movement and home range sizes of the fish are during each season and see if the fish actually do or do not cross over the culvert. So this project really developed out of a um, ichthyology class that I was teaching uh, last spring and uh, we came up here to do some sampling and we found quite a large population of red band trout and I uh, was talking to Shelby uh, my student about possibly working on this uh, species for her honors thesis. And then I also started talking to Trout Unlimited and some other uh, conservation groups, but Trout Unlimited was really, really interested in this project because it was so close to downtown Boise and very little work had been done on red band trout in this system. These fit tags have numbers associated with them that we can read from outside of the fish using a fit tag scanner so we know what fish it is. And these tags are almost always stay with the fish their whole life. There's a very low shedding rate, assuming that the wound heals up and the tag doesn't get pushed back out. That's why I push the tag in like this. And so it allows us to identify the fish in future and know if it moves around. One twelve, and we're taking genetic samples in hopes of additional genetic analysis of the fish. And just because it's easy to do, and the fin will regrow, and so we can get further information about the fish if we have the ability to do further genetic analysis on them. One of the reasons why this project is so important is because this particular population of fish is uh, genetically pure. So these are red band trout that haven't um, hybridized with hatchery rainbow trout. The fact that we found a population, or two populations really, that have, have uh, pure genetics is really exciting. I'm really interested in these fish because I really like them, just personally. It's hard to explain exactly why you just love fish, but I care about the fish and I'd love to help their population out and make sure that they persist here in Dry Creek.